you know, as we uh, wait upon the Lord for the whole of the month, you know, of December. You know, um, one of the things that I, before I, 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 I do what I, I have, one of the things that I, I found out about God, you know, is that if he's going to uh, increase, increase the people, you know, and grow them, uh, whether it is financially or begin to release a level of favor, then that group of people must be able to be people that can hear instructions. You know, uh, if, 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 you're, if you don't hear instruction or you can't hear instruction, you know, from God, then um, it's going to be very difficult for God to change your status and your levels. You know, one thing I would encourage you as we begin to fast, your ability to fine-tune your ears to hear, you know, because I find out that when I read through the, the Bible and even when I look at my life, you know, God will never do anything to you unless he gives you an instruction. Abraham, take thy only son instruction. Just read through the Bible. Your ability to hear you know, and then obey. You want God to change your life financially, all right? If you can't hear instructions, then there's going to be serious, uh, you know, problem. And uh, the challenge and the reason why we are at the same place that we are is basically is either we are inundated by the tradition or where we are coming from. And the tradition and where we are coming from is actually an enemy to our rising and to our, our progress, you know, our, I will encourage us to be able to uh, fine-tune our ears and break, you know, into, you know, into, into that um, so that uh, you can hear when God is telling you what to do, when to do, and what to do, you know. And basically, most of, I don't know, that's how he works. Most of his opening, you know, as a tied to you obeying instructions that he uh you know tells you and when it comes to financial breakthrough you know it has to be that god is going to open your eyes to see a need and then he's going to tell you i want you to do this mostly most often is going to be outside of your comfort zone you know that you can be able to break through um my, our prayer my desire you know either is for for this church or for this part of the world you know, is our ability to see people rising up to become kingdom financiers that can hear God. You know, people that are crazily wealthy. It is not right that we are just a bunch, you know, and can't move things. You know, it is expected that we are supposed to rise up, you know, in, in kingdom wealth, you know, where God can easily direct and give us instructions you know, on things and what, uh, what to do. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You know, um, uh, yesterday I, I locked up myself and, you know, and then today, you know, generally I was just like asking God, I mean, why is it, <laughs> it's not right that we come to a place, you know, it is supposed to be what we want to do, we do it, you know. And, but if you're here, you know, even, you know, to tight is a problem. Your offering had just been 100 naira, 200 naira. You know, in Kabada, 500, you know, and then being in one place, you know. There's no much you can do, even with the teachings that one release. You know, if you want God to stretch you, you know, sometimes you have to just stretch yourself, you know, and break, you know, into that place where you are so mindful, you know, of little things you know concerning um you know his house I, I just felt i need to say that you know before i do uh, my teaching hallelujah well we've been doing the work and uh what i need to do you know um you know you know a lot of things flashed my mind you know we just do changing your world uh got somebody then after changing your world we have debt you know we can't pay you know, very embarrassing. You have a church of 500, 600 people offering 50,000. So you know that on the average, it means somebody is giving, it's, it's average is 50 naira, you know, and somebody will come in from outside 
and give an offering and his offering doubles the offering of 600 people. Do you know that there is a problem either with the people or with the region? I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. I say, I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. Yes, you know, and so we, we, there has to be, we have to rise up, you know. But again, God cannot do anything without you receiving instruction. I remember when we were getting ready to come in here. And sometimes, me, for me, it's difficult for, to come up and begin to tell you what God says. You know, and so God told me, he said, well, um, um, that's the, the issues that are up. He said, well, I want to do something in the lives of people. You know, but I want to tie it to the AC. When, when he told me that, I said, I said, but what, what is that? You know, I know an Arewa from EYN Baptist, Equa, you know, and I know the stress, you know, and things like that. And so, but I actually came and said it. I don't know whether you remember. And I picked one AC. I, being, I believe that was the beginning of a turnaround of financial breakthrough in my life, you know. And I, I can name people, you know, that took it, you know, um, you know, this, the, yeah, and then this lady now that she's in Ireland now, you know, the one that married, you know, she, she picked it. I came picked it. Um, yeah, they picked it. And I think you, you picked it. Yeah, you picked it too. And you can, and be, because of how God deals with me, I try to track the people and see, you know, and I found out that for a turnaround to take place, there has to be an instruction. Hallelujah. And I see everything about these people. I inclusive, I inclusive, you know, just because an instruction is given and one is able to, to hear it. Hallelujah. Well, I need to say that because as we begin to move into the new year and then having an understanding of the kingdom, it is not difficult for God to break the windows of heaven and pour you blessings. God told me, he said that it's not difficult to open the reaches in dark places, but can people hear? You know, and that's a challenge, you know, can people hear, you know, because the burden for me is the, is the poverty that is so much in this. But the only thing that will break the poverty is the entrance of the kingdom and the word of God. Come on, put your hands together as I begin. <laughs> hallelujah. I say hallelujah. All right. So I've been doing a work. What I'm going to do today, you know, um, I, 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 will, I need to, I, I will not... Oh, I, I stop at number six on Sunday. I will not do that. I will just rush it and then do what I have to do, uh, you know, today. You know, or I will just jump into what I have to do uh, today. Um, the kingdom is in motion and actually is moving, you know, on the shoulders. And wherever you arrive, the kingdom, you know, arrive. You know, arrive. Now, uh, as long as the kingdom you know, uh, is present in a colony, you know, by the presence of the governor, then the king is also present. Anytime the governor is present, the governor is, a, is you know, is the, the sure fact, you know, that the absent king is in the colony, all right? And we try to allow ourselves have some few, uh, uh, you know, understanding about, about the governor, all right? Now, um, uh, I don't know. I want to just take a poll because next Sunday I will not be in your face until Wednesday. How many of you, and it matters to me because I just feel as if people are not getting what I'm saying. How many of you are understanding this teaching on the kingdom? Wave your hand if you're understanding it. Wave your hand. You know, because you know sometimes you can just be flying on people's head. You know, you know. And, but again, I will encourage you that as you, you know, you have to consciously, because if the message of the kingdom, you know, is going to work for you, you have to consciously enter into it, you know. However, you know that I have to take my time to begin to, begin to talk more on the kingdom because, you know, sometimes when you come with it so hard, you know, people just get dazed and confused, you know, and, and that's why many churches don't preach the message. Maybe some don't even understand it. And it is easy for you to preach the normal thing that is in a church, the emotional thing, the thing that we are used to, you know, it holds the crowd, it brings the crowd, you know, and, and things like that. But however, the message of the kingdom uh, basically, you know, digs you the foundations. And once you're able to get it, you know, then famanka yakari, you know, uh, um, there is a, a level, you know, of, of press that I would love to begin to see, you know, in the people, 
even around this area as we push in towards the word of God, you know, being crazily, you know. Now, when you're dealing with the kingdom, you know, you have to understand, and that's what I would do today, basically, um, uh, the mind of God about the king and the kingdom, and then why, and then how we are created. Of course, you know that I dealt with the natural, you know, I'll show you a few um, uh, contrasts, and then the similarities and then bring you the mind of God. But again, you have to understand that anytime the kingdom is present in a colony as a result of the governor, then the king is obligated to protect that colony. All right. And so, you know, you know, the protection of a king over a colony actually might not necessarily be because of the inhabitants, you know, but because of the presence of the governor. Remember, the governor is always from the motherland. The governor has an obligation to come and then teach the people the values and the morals of the place that he is coming from. However, you also have to understand when you're dealing, you know, um, you know, with the governor, is that his presence is actually for protection. All right. Now, um, as long as the governor is there, nothing can touch the colony. All right. Anything that touches the colony. You know, the governor is mobilized. On Sunday, I was telling you that whenever... I want you to put your hand on your head and say, I am an ambassador. No, say with energy. Say, I am an ambassador. All right, so when you are a citizen, you know, you're called... You're never called a Christian. You're called salt. You're called light. You're called ambassador. Whenever you touch an ambassador, you see, it's different from touching any other person in the territory. When you touch an ambassador, you're touching a nation, not a person. You can meet anybody on the street and then hit him. Okay, they will call it assault. All right, but when you slap or touch an ambassador, they call it war. Are you hearing me? Because now you're touching, you know, you know. So when God said that you are an ambassador, you know, you're a political appointee. You're actually representing a nation. All right. The reason why Gaddafi had to be killed and oosted out, if you're actually a person that knows uh, news, you know, is that an American ambassador was killed. How many of you know that? All right. Okay. He was stomped and then killed. And immediately you touch an ambassador, the whole nation, the Navy, the Air Force, everything about, all right. That is why the reason is because an ambassador is like the governor of that nation in the place. But let me announce to you as we begin to pull this thing, you know, the governor is in the inside of you. The governor, the presence of the governor is the presence of the absent king. Are you getting what I'm talking about? And the governor being in you is for protection. That is why no weapon that is ever formed against you that shall prosper. You're not a religious person. You are a citizen with a legal right. Am I talking in house of refuge? Come and put your hands together. But you see, when you don't understand who you are, then you're going to be begging for things that you're actually supposed to legally stand in in them you need to understand that you operate based on legal issues when you come when it comes to kingdom operations you're actually dealing with diplomatic issues and kingdom you know you know and the reason why we have a church okay you know you know you know you know you know jesus christ contrasting just like the romans have their ecclesia i will also build my own ecclesia why do we come as a church remember I told you about little Rome. The reason why you have little Rome is that they come together and legislate and formulate laws. And when they formulate laws, not only are the civilians supposed to obey the law, even the people outside of the little Rome are supposed to, am I talking here? So when you come into this place, we're actually here to formulate policies in which we live by based on the instruction of the Holy Spirit in his word and as we begin to live by it also control how we operate on our outside am I talking in the house of refuge and as long as we are that is why you cannot just stay in your house you have to come to the palastra you have to come to the ecclesia every week every day you know you know every time that the door is open so that we can be able to come and understand policies of the kingdom in which you are here to represent am i talking in house of refuge come and put your hands together and when we come here we are supposed to be able to learn the mind of the governor or of god of the king and as we move out of this place it is called 
outreach. You're never supposed to go out without the intention of expanding your kingdom. Every kingdom has a goal and the goal of every kingdom is to take territories. Am I talking in the house of refuge? So when I leave this place, my mind, my con you know, is to take territory, is to get another man, to give the man uh, a citizenship. And I was, yeah, you want to clap? Come and put your hands together. That's why whenever you're coming back, you're coming back with somebody that is going to, am I talking in the house of refuge? I said it on Sunday, if life is chasing you and people are trying to kill you and if you can locate an embassy or American embassy and if you you just run once you step right inside nobody can pass the gate why because right now where you are is no more nigeria it is called america why though in nigeria but in that place you're going to see the flag of america and i told you that come all ye that are heavy laden whatever is chasing you in this world the sun the moon whatever all you need to do is to be able to find your way and run right into the kingdom that's why the bible said that the kingdom suffers violence but the violent are taking it by force people are forcefully pushing themselves right in once you step in the light of the devil is stopped by the gator and no evil come and put your hands together if you understand her that's why you know Paul said that let no man ever disturb me because I bear on my body the marks why what is he saying whatever you want to say you can say it as long as I'm outside of the kingdom but now that I step into the kingdom there's nothing that you can ever say that can hold why because if any man is in Christ he is a new creation come and put your hands together come on do you understand what I'm talking about there is therefore now no condemnation. And I have committed abortion. That was then, but this is now. And I have killed somebody. That was then, but this is now. And I have run away from the flight of the enemy and the judgment of the things that I have been done doing. But now I have stepped into the kingdom of God. And so God can already told me there is therefore now. Somebody say now. No condemnation to any anybody that is in the kingdom of God uh, who is he that condemn uh, it is God that justified uh, because when I enter there is a blood uh, that covers me uh, come and put your hands together and there's nothing you can do about it uh, and all I got in this place uh, is goodness and mercy following me uh, all the days of my life uh, and so when I walk the people that have not yet entered and knew me when I was in the other place let's uh, say the one I've got in a prospering Nashi. Commander Wani Bawani Bani. I've already entered into a place. I've gone into a kingdom that ruled over the world. Come on, put your hands together if you understand. You are not an ordinary person. You're a deputy, you're deputizing God. You're a citizen of the Put your hands together. Sha! The presence of a governor is for protection. And once the governor is in the inside of me, no devil can touch me. I can walk on snakes and serpents. And they can harm me. I can take deadly things. If you understand it, put the praise on it and say, I believe it. Somebody say, yeah. And you were in the Baptist it's not sister the Ganu Muba Mui Haka na Muna Ihu Muna Kashua Muna making noise Muna Amsawa somebody say yeah Kaiba Agama Lizard Bene, you are the son of God. So Kadakana Haka the Kanka. When you get it, you can stand up in your bugaka, you can shout. Shout Come on, somebody shout in this place. Uh, look at your neighbor and say that you are covered, you're protected, uh, you're defended, you're already covered. Uh, once you're inside and God is in the inside of you, it's for protection. Uh, no devil in hell can touch you. I was thinking I was down. I can't be able to preach. Uh, but anytime I come, I hold this. Uh, something entered me. Uh, come and put your hands together and shout.
this afternoon I, I was coming up. Stephen came and my mom says she came. Says she said, Biasa, you know, Lafianka, Lafianka. I said, Lafianka. I said, that you look, you don't look happy. You look, you know, but, but maybe I, I feel something already in Atura near Akea. In a gym, balloon, 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 balloon. In a gym, good word, anointing. You can't talk about the kingdom and not feel it. Look at your neighbor and say that you are an ambassador. Come on, put your hand on your head and say that I am an ambassador. Yeah. You're not a religious being, you're a legal being. You're a legal being. You're a, you're a legal being. So in dealing with that, and having that understanding, my assignment today, you know, is to introduce... <laughs> Can I beg? Okay, I'll continue. All right, beautiful. Is to introduce uh, the kingdom which transcends our human government. I've been dealing with, you know, with the, and then trying to contrast. All right, this kingdom, you know, of course, you know, has properties that are similar to, you know, but they actually go beyond the traditional earthly kingdom that we know. You know, uh, God had to bring Jesus at the time that he had to bring him, you know, because it's easy for him to contrast, you know, the Roman kingdom that were taking over the Palestine, you know, and his kingdom. All right. Now, I'm going to start with a statement, the first statement that Jesus Christ, you know, you know made. And you have to be able to follow and hear him well. Let's go to Mark chapter 1 and verse 15. If you can give me in NIV, I will be happy. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. And verse 15. All right, now listen. The time has come. Now, Jesus is the one talking. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. All right, now, but I want you to just, the time has come, the kingdom of God is near. The time has come. All right, so the question that needs to be answered is what time? What time is Jesus Christ talking about? And why is he talking about it at that time? Another question that you have to understand is that what was the nature of the kingdom that he is referring to here? The time has come. The kingdom of God has arrived. It's here. All right. Other versions would say has arrived. So what time is he talking about and what is the nature? All right. Now, this is Mark chapter 1 and verse 15. This is his beginning, his public, uh, you know, you know, you know, so this is the first thing, one of the first things that he started saying. Watch, he did not say that a new religion has come. He did not say Christianity, no. He said kingdom, the kingdom of God. Kingdom, like the kingdom of Rome. Kingdom is a, gov is a government, is a country. So he is announcing something and he is not like it's not vague. It's something that is real. He was announcing the imminent return of a kingdom and its influence. He said the kingdom, the time has come. The kingdom of God is near or has arrived. He's announcing the coming of a kingdom, a nation, a country. And he's announcing its coming and also its influence. Why will Jesus Christ use these particular governmental references at the beginning of his public life? If you can't answer it, then you're going to have serious problem. Why is he using that at the beginning the second thing that you have to be able to understand that if the influence of the kingdom of a kingdom you know is entering the world because he's announcing a coming of 
a government. Isaiah told us that unto us, and the government shall be on him. So he is now announcing the entrance of a government. Okay, so if he's announcing the entrance of a coming of a kingdom, all right, into the world, what are the new culture that will emerge when this new kingdom arrives? What will be the new culture that the citizens that will be or enter into this kingdom, what are, what will be the new culture? Okay, because every, every kingdom, you know, transfers its culture. Transfers its norms and its value. That's why I told you that the reason why you're taking tea is because it is, we were colonized. All right, the kingdom brought in the culture. All right, when Romans invaded the Palestine, they brought in their culture. Am I talking in house of refuge? All right, okay. So, if we are going to understand Mark chapter 1 and verse 15, then we have to go back to Genesis, to the or origin of this kingdom. Because the announcement of this kingdom is not just telling us that this is the first, it's not telling us that this is the first entrance of the kingdom, no. The kingdom actually was something that was conceived in God, was actually on earth, and then it returned. Because anytime you declare independence, the governor goes. The going of the governor is the going back of the kingdom. The reason why Britain are not here is because when we declared independence, the governor left. The going of the governor is the going back of the kingdom. So later as I begin to build this thing, you have to understand when Adam sinned and, and the Holy Spirit, who is the governor that was in him, left, the kingdom left. Alright? But however, the mind in the mind of God, because the earth was not created by humans. The earth was created and there's a reason why the earth was created. You have to understand. However, if you don't, if you don't, now, now let, me, let me announce from the beginning. The problem that we are having is that our inability to lose something so that we can take something new. We are holding on to what had been. But what had been might ne not necessarily be it. All right. So Jesus Christ said, when he said repent, the word repent is not talking about sin. The word repent is change the way that you have been thinking. Because something new that you have never been used to, it was in the beginning, but all this while that you have been, you have not, okay, is near, it's about to, and you can never understand it if you are still holding on to the old way of your thinking. As long as you don't repent, repent there is not talking about you living sin. It's talking about in as much as it's inclusive because it's coming with a culture. It's talking about you have to change the way you are thinking. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together if you understand. Now, few differences before I begin to take us into trouble. I have a lot of things to do. You know, but basically it's teaching. I need to, I need to teach you. You have to understand. You see, the natural kingdom, the, you know, the, and then the God's kingdom, you know, you know, few differences. Number one is that, you know, the territory of earth was created by the home country. Unlike the natural kingdom, Britain did not create Nigeria. Britain invaded Nigeria by force. So it's not the same like the kingdom that Jesus Christ is talking about. Because the kingdom, because the, the, the kingdom is invading the earth. Just like Britain invaded Nigeria. Just like Rome invaded Palestine. Jesus Christ is saying that there is, a kingdom is coming. However, the earth that this kingdom is invading was created by that same country that is coming. Come on, if you understand what I'm talking about, come on, put your hands together. All right. Another difference is that when God created or made the earth, there were no inhabitants on it at first. 
you have to understand that the earth preceded Adam. It wasn't that Adam was there. No, no. The earth was created. Then Adam was made, was formed. All right. So, so at first there were no inhabitants. It was a, a place that was designed in the mind of God. All right. Okay. And the earth was created with man in the mind of God. All right. The earth was created for the extinction of the influence of his kingdom. However, he wants somebody to do that administrative work. And that person is man. So he created the earth to be habited. He never created it to be void. If you read Isaiah. All right. Okay. It was specifically prepared for those who will live there. Man. However, when Britain was invading the earth, there were people. All right. Okay. Now another, another difference is that the original inhabitants were not of a different culture from the home country. Unlike when Britain was coming to Nigeria, we were of different culture. But not God. Because you see, when God made us, he made us in his image and likeness. So we were having the same culture with the motherland. All right, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, okay. Just that then sin came. However, you know, few similarities. These are the similarities. The similarities between the natural kingdom and the, and, you know, and the celestial kingdom is the number one. You know, the home country, and it's a desire of every kingdom. The home country desire to expand the realm of its influence by bringing the nature, the mindset, the purpose of a kingdom in the colony of the earth. Same thing. Whenever a kingdom invades a place, no kingdom stays without expansion. The goal of any kingdom is to take territory. And when they take territory, they want to bring the mindset, the lifestyle, and the way of living of that country into another place. Same thing with God. That's why Jesus Christ said that when you pray, that the kingdom come, the will, the purpose, the mindset of God should take the earth just exactly as it is in heaven. No kingdom will ever exist without having expansion in mind. So similarities. The second similarity is that whenever you meet the king's governor, the king governor is always present in the colony to oversee the transformation process because the changes that takes place in the people in the colony is actually overseen and done by the governor. That's why Jesus said that I need to go. When I go, the governor will come and he's going to stay with you, dwell with you. Am I talking in the house of refuge? Why? Because it is the governor that will walk in the transforming you to become exactly like the mother. That's why the governor is always from the country. We're not, dealing, we're not talking religious talk here. In Canada, religious mind. We're talking governmental talk here. So the question that you need to answer is how is this colony called the earth created? How is it created? And that's why I'm going to take us and then we're going to see because once we understand it in its concept, it, or, or, you know, you know, then it's easy for us to be able to start moving in it. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Genesis 1 and 1 tell us that in the beginning, God. All right, now, I want you to remove the word God and put the creator king. You, you have to understand that the first thing that God introduced himself to us, he did not introduce himself as holy. He did not introduce himself as righteous. No, he introduced himself as a creator. That's why you have to understand that when he made creatures, when he made you know, creation, and then when he made us, and he said that he made us in his image, you have to understand the image of God. The first thing that he allow us to know is that he's a creator so he created creators so i am a creator created in the image of the creatorial god 
That's why creativity is not supposed to be deficient in my life. Kings are creators. Okay, so the first thing, okay, in the beginning, the creator king. Because that's the beginning of the colony that it's, it is mine. He created the heavens, motherland, and then he now created the colony, earth. However, we don't know how long it takes between the and the. Because he created the heavens and he established a perfect government. And it is that perfect government that he wants it reduplicated in the under earth. So when he set up a nation, a government is a country, is a kingdom, heaven. Heaven is a kingdom, is a country and a government, but is of spiritual materiality. The fact that you can see it does not mean that it's not in existence. It's an invisible country. However, this creator king, because he is the king, no king will ever be okay without, cre without taking territories. And if a king is going to have sons, the king will always create territory and then take the sons so that they can also establish their rulership. Because whenever a king gives birth to a, to a, you know, a child, that child is also a king. And kings rule over domain. That's why they have kingdoms, king domain, king dominion. They have dominion over kingdoms. Kingdom means dominion over a kingdom. Are you, are you, are you hearing what I'm talking about? All right. So, so we found out that, that the creator king. Now, Paul described this king. Give me 1 Peter 6 from 15 to 16. Because we're seeing little glimpse of this creator. Remember? Your God is a creator king. King. Alright. So Paul said, with which God will bring about in his own time. Then he started describing this creator king. God. The blessed. And the only, only, somebody say only. The only ruler. The next thing we, we hear about this God, this our king, he is that he is the king of kings. In other words, he is king, but he's going to also, he has children, and the children are not subject, they are kings. You're going to hear what I'm talking about. Come and put your hands together. If you, if you understand this teaching, religion is, you know, you know, and then he is the Lord of lords. Now, next verse. Him, the king, he's the only one that is immortal. He lives in an unapproachable light. That's why nobody has ever seen him. Whom no one has seen or can see. Nobody has seen him. Because he lives in a light that you can't approach. Jesus Christ is a downgrade of that light. So that you can see. He's a downgrade of that light that you can touch. And then we are also a downgrade of the light that the world can see. That's why he said that you also are light. But you see, you know, it's a downgrade of a light and of a light of a light. But you see, the, the king, he dwells in a light that is unapproachable. Nobody has ever seen him. Moses said, I want to see you. God said, you can't see me. Anybody that sees God dies. You can't see the light. You can't see. He covered Moses and passed. Moses saw his back part. When he saw his back part, because you see, that light, light is knowledge. Anytime you enter into that light, you know everything. 
Moses was not giving birth to when God created the earth. When he saw the back part of God, Genesis 1, the whole of Genesis was downloaded in him. The whole of Exodus was downloaded. You don't know, understand what I'm talking about. Just by seeing the light, he understood the creation. He knew that in the beginning God created there. How did he know? Is it that God that sat in there and was telling him? No. He just saw light. Because when you enter light, you just know. That's why when you go to heaven, you know. You're not hearing what I'm talking about. Come on, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. That's why when you, when you receive Jesus in you, understanding that passes people comes in you. You just, you just know things you don't know. That's why you have word of knowledge, word of wisdom. It's coming from a twinkle of that light. That's why you enter into a place, you just know that there are demons here. There are, you just know why. Because light is, is knowledge. You're not hearing that's why if you're born again, you're an architect and they're having problem, you can lie down and know what to do. You're a doctor, you can go into operation and know what to do. When the light is in the inside of you, you can never be stranded. You're doing calculation and cat cafe. You will just know what you need to do because you're a human and then you're a spirit is to move into the light and come back with the revelation and the truth of that. You know, you hear what I'm talking about. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. If you understand, you will never fail a course. I read physics. I get results sometimes just by sleeping. I go back into who I am. I come back on my table and solve the problem. Why? When you are in the light, you know. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. You come to do contract and business, and then when you're not a man, is a true checker, you just sit down and mm, you just know. You're not hearing what I'm talking about. <laughs> and they say, yeah, I can I say what you just know. Light. Light. Elisha, just know. And the king wake up. So that there is a spy in this place. When you get me, she know there's no spy. There's somebody that dwells in the light. Anything you do in your bedroom, am I talking in house of refuge? Because he is in the unapproachable light. So when you have the little of the light, which is you're not hearing what I'm talking about. Moses just saw the back part and the whole of Genesis was downloaded. We wouldn't have known what happened in the beginning except when he was in the light then the revelation was there. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. That's why you can't be stranded. You can't be in a place where you don't know things. In him is light. In the light is the development. The enlargement is the knowledge of people. Light. Somebody say light. Come on, somebody say light again. There's no reason why we that are born again will be deficient. There's no reason why we are... That's why when you don't know what you carry and who you are, there are hidden treasures in dark places. Light. There is wisdom. The difference between a poor man and a, bro, and a rich man is wisdom. Wisdom is God. Wisdom is light. You know, you know what I'm talking about. That's why he said, if you lack wisdom, let him ask. Who? Ask the father that give it. Why? His wisdom. Come on, put your hands together if you understand. His light. So Paul, Paul is allowing you into the little thing about your God. This creator king. So this, I hope you're in church. You have to understand the beginning. So this eternal king of an unseen kingdom conceptualized and then made the entire universe. Because he's a king. So by creation right, everything belongs to him. The earth is his property. By creation right. So when you look at the universe, and you see how it is being coordinated. You see how the solar system moves and nothing is falling. You just know there has to be a government in place that is holding that thing. That's why Psalm said the fools said that there is no God. Psalm 14, 1, Psalm 53, 1. It's only a foolish person that know the, the distance between you know, you know, the sun and the earth. And if it shifts a little, we will burn. If it goes on, we will be cold. I mean, so there's, there's some, there's, there has to be, there has to be some, 
that controls the madness. So when you begin to move and you're thinking that you're on your own, you're crazy. Fools say in their heart, there is no God. But when you, the creation display the, 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 the power of this creator king. So when you look, the creation of the earth is God expanding the invisible kingdom. Remember, in the beginning, God created the heavens. So when he created the heavens, because he is king, kings, king, take territories. But because he is God and there is no new territory, he created the territory so that he can extend his influence into that territory. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So he created the earth. He created it. Hebrew 11.3. Allow us. To understand that the universe was formed. Give me Hebrew 11.3. He commanded it. By faith we understand. You see, the universe, he formed it. He formed it by a command. He commanded it because he's creator. He, so that what, is, what you are seeing right now actually came out from the invisible kingdom. He was in the invisible kingdom. He wanted to extend. And he needed a universe. He commanded it. So from the invisible kingdom, whoop, the earth came. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So that what is seen, so that what is seen, came out from the command, made out of what was invisible. So there was an invisible nation, country, kingdom, and then a universe. When he created the universe, he looked into the universe and chose a planet called Earth. I said that that would be one of the first that I will extend my influence on it. However, my influence is going to be extended by some people. So kingdom is a concept in the mind of God. The king of the invisible world decided to create the physical world. So he did this for the purpose of expanding his heavenly domain as an extension of himself and also extension of his government. Remember, the president of the governor is the president of the absent king. Now, what God wanted was an additional territory. So that he can rule and transform it, the earth, into the expression of his. These are heavy words. You can't handle it. Some of you can't handle it. We possess it. He, he, dim, he deemed it fit. Because he wants, because nobody can carry the nature of his kingdom into the colony without having that. He deemed it. Listen to me. I think I gave you. We were designed to be like act like and function like the ruler of the invisible kingdom. Let me say it again. We were designed to be like, act like, and function like the ruler of the invisible kingdom. God is supposed to sit here and then that's my boy. And that's why he kept our spirit in this invisible kingdom for some time to acculturate us. That's why when Adam came, <laughs> how do you, how can he know the knowledge of all the names of the animals and the things? He was in the light. And for your information, I said it two Wednesdays ago. I said you are confused. You, how do you think Adam named the animals in the sea? Adam could stay days under water without any oxygen tank. Adam could walk on water. Adam could fly. 
There are some birds that they dwell up. So Adam, do you understand? Just like you know, we sit down and say that he is omnipotent, he is invisible. You are thinking, you are assigning it just to God. You don't know that the, the, the nature of God is in you. You're not hearing what I'm talking about. You're not hearing what I'm talking about. Because Jesus Christ came to show us exactly what we were. That's why he walked on water. That's why he spoke on the tree. That's why he moved through walls. You're not hearing what I'm talking about. He's trying to tell you what Adam was. Adam could walk on water. Adam could dwell under water for days, naming animals. Adam could come up from water, fly on the sky, see birds, talk to birds, come down on the ground, and you're not hearing what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the man. You don't know the capacity of who you are and what you carry. What you are seeing is a fallen man. And, 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 and that's why when Jesus Christ said that, be, change how you perceive life. You have to come out from the matrix of the world. The world has messed you up. If it doesn't change, you won't understand because then the kingdom is right here. When the kingdom is here, some of the things that you will hear are going to beat your normal way of reasoning and how you were raised. And as long as you don't throw it, that's why he said that you have to be like children. Your problem is that you're grown. Hearing what I'm talking about. Have you seen a child? You know, someone give them a bonus. They jump in. They say he can fly. He will jump. He doesn't know that he will break. Gravity was not operating with Adam. He had room. If gravity could hold God, gravity couldn't hold Adam. When he wants, he walks on it. When he wants, he... Am I talking in the house of refuge? Come and put your hands together if you understand. How did he know about dam? How did he know about gold? How did he know... How did he... How? Because when he was made, he was made to act, he was made to function like the ruler of the invisible God. So when the creator God gives us his own nature, two things happen. He gave us, when he gave us his nature, he gave us two things. Two things. I have 10 minutes. I have 11 minutes. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen to me. All of this thing that I was talking to you, his nature, his characteristics, being dukkha in, is in the spirit realm. Man. Man is, is not physical, it's in spirit. The problem is that you think that what you're seeing is you. All the things that I was seeing about God and the way he made you is, is in the, So he kept you there to acculturate you so that you, 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 you marinate in that. Then when he finished about your nature, you know, number two, the first thing he did was he now formed your body. He gave us a physical body. Because the earth, the colony he created is physical. So he created us a physical body so that we could function in the physical world that he had created and prepared specifically for us. Not for animals, not for spirit, not for Satan. Satan is an illegal illegal person on earth. Any spirit without a body is illegal on earth. He's supposed to be in the Shemites. Whether he's the third heaven or first heaven or second, but he's illegal. When it comes to earth, listen, they will rule over all the what? Earth. If the devil is having a portion of the earth, if somebody lost his mind and gave him. Come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about.